Puppet is one of the oldest Ruby-based system administrator friendly IT automation tool majorly used to configure, manage, deploy, and orchestrate various applications and services across your whole infrastructure. The earliest version of Puppet open source project was released in 2005 by Lou Kennis, the founder of Puppet. Today, Puppet is used by tens of thousands of infrastructure and DevOps engineers to automate their regular work. Puppet comes with multiple built-in resource types, generally called Puppet resources that can perform almost any IT automation task. Puppet comes with two deployment models, master client deployment model and Puppet self-contained standalone deployment model. Master client is the primary Puppet deployment model used in the industry, but users may have complete flexibility to use Puppet standalone deployment model to avoid setting up all extra configuration that is not required for testing or POC cases. Puppet supports various operating systems, including Red Hat, CentOS, Ubuntu, Oracle Linux, Mac OS, Solaris, and Windows. Before starting the Puppet journey, let us understand what are imperative and declarative patterns. When it comes to programming patterns, there are two types that is important for us to know, imperative and declarative programming. Let us understand this using a simple example. Let's assume you want to visit Mr. Simon's house located at Street D. You booked a cab and started giving step-by-step -step directions to the driver, like take right, go to Street B, then take left, go to Street C, and then take right to go to street D and stop at the house. Specifying what to do and how to do is an imperative programming style. On the other hand, when you book a cab, say through Uber, and just specify the final destination like drive to Mr. Simon's house, is the declarative version of programming. In this case, we are not giving the directions but are just specifying the final target location. Specifying what to do, not how to do, is a declarative programming style. There are two main advantages of declarative style over the imperative style. In declarative style, you don't have to force the traveler to memorize a long set of instructions. Also, declarative style allows the traveler to optimize the route when possible. Here is a simple shell script that is used to create a user on the system. Here, we specify how to create the user, what commands to use on the operating system, etc. So this is imperative programming pattern. However, on the right is a more declarative approach, where we achieve the same results with only a few lines of Puppet code, which is an example of declarative programming pattern. And thus, Puppet uses declarative programming approach using Puppet DSL, which is domain-specific language, which we will learn in next few lectures. The primary responsibility of Puppet is to maintain defined state, or sometimes called desired state, mentioned in the Puppet code. Puppet takes care of all your regular repetitive tasks, along with the application deployment and infrastructure management and thereby providing you the opportunity to invest your time in the product to carry out profit-oriented business. Hence, Puppet helps in maximizing business productivity. Puppet codes will give you the same result every time with 100% consistency and efficiency. Codes written in Puppet are idiom-potent in nature. We will explore more about it in the later section. Puppet is written in Ruby and uses its own DSL, domain-specific language, which is easy to understand. In fact, Puppet is one of the best examples of declarative language. When it comes to creating, reading, updating, and maintaining configuration codes on the system, you will find declarative methods more simple and easier than native scripting language. Puppet is scalable with any cloud environment, virtual machines, and standalone servers. 
Puppet can be used to manage tens to thousands of nodes with ease. It is not uncommon to meet users managing more than 1000 servers using Puppet on a single master. Let us look at what you can do with Puppet. In this simple example, we are using Puppet to configure applications on a single server. Some examples could be install various application packages like web servers, databases, monitoring or backup tools etc. Setting up some firewall rules, modifying some application configuration files or managing application services etc. All these tasks can be performed by Puppet without any human intervention. Isn't it great? Now, let's take a look at another use case. In this case, we are setting up a complex infrastructure that spans across public or private cloud and virtual or local data center environments using Puppet. With Puppet, you can provision VMs or instances on public cloud like Amazon, Azure or GCP or private clouds like OpenStack or VMware. Once provisioned, you can extend Puppet functionality to deploy, configure and orchestrate various applications on newly provisioned instances. Even you can set up communication between different public and private clouds or any other environments. There are a lot of inbuilt resource types available in Puppet that supports these kind of operations. So how does Puppet work? As there are two deployment models for Puppet, the primary Puppet model consists of a master and one or more agents or clients. The master is a Linux based machine where we install and configure Puppet master software. This host is primarily responsible for maintaining configurations in the form of Puppet codes. The agents are the target machines managed by Puppet with the Puppet agent software installed on top of them. These could be all different servers in your environments that we wish to manage using Puppet. The agent nodes check in regularly after every 1800 seconds with the master node to see if anything needs to be updated in the agent. Please note 1800 second is the default check-in time for Puppet agents. If anything needs to be updated, the agent pulls the necessary Puppet codes from the master and performs specific actions. This is known as pull-based mechanism. As in this case, the agent is pulling for updates and pulling codes from the master node as opposed to the master pushing the codes in tools like Ansible or Salt. Remember, the master node can only be Linux. You cannot have Windows operating system as your master node in Puppet. However, the agent can be configured on any supported operating system flavors such as Linux or Windows or Solaris or Mac OS. The other Puppet deployment model is Puppet self-contained server, which acts as a master and agent on a single host. The master agent deployment model is used for production use cases, whereas the standalone is used for developing Puppet modules or for testing or POCs. There are two primary deployment model for configuration management tools, pull-based and push-based. In a push-based deployment model, a master server pushes the configuration and softwares to the individual servers. After verifying the inventory and then establishing the secure connection, the master runs command remotely on the clients. Configuration push is initiated by master node. Some examples of such tools are Ansible and Salt Stack. However, in a pull-based deployment model, the individual servers contact a master server, establish a connection after verifying the inventory specified in the master, download their configurations and softwares, and then configure themselves accordingly. Configuration pull is initiated by agents at regular intervals. Puppet and Chef are the best examples of pull-based models. Both of the models are well accepted in the industry. They both have some specific advantages and disadvantages that you should understand when making a decision about the tool you want to use. We just discussed that Puppet is based on pull mechanism. 
Here, we will explain the data flow of Puppet through a simple example. Puppet Master is a node having Puppet Master software installed and configured. This machine is responsible for complete Puppet code management and contain all of the configurations. Every admin has to log in into this machine to create or change Puppet codes. We have few different agents with Puppet agent software installed on top of them. The communication between master and agent is established through secure certificate. We will learn about Puppet certification management later in this course. The Puppet master will allow a secure connection with an agent on port 8140 to enable Puppet master communication to perform various operations and tasks. Make sure to open port 8140 on your Puppet master. Typically, this is a three-step process. Once the connectivity is established between the agent and the master, the agent sends the data about its state to the Puppet master server. These are called facts. This information includes host name, kernel details, IP addresses, file system details, network details, etc. Puppet uses the facts and compile a list with the configuration to be applied to the agent. This list of configuration to be performed on an agent is known as catalog. This could be changes such as package installation, upgrade or removal, file system creation, user creation or deletion, server reboot, IP configuration changes, etc. The agent uses the catalog to apply required configuration changes on the nodes. In case there are no drifts in the configuration, agent will not perform any configuration changes and keep the server to be running with the same configurations. So, after receiving the catalog from the Puppet Master, Puppet agent responds immediately to the changes by executing the configuration drifts. During the whole process, the node reports back to the Puppet Master, indicating configuration has been applied and completed. Even Puppet provides the flexibility in the complex environments to integrate these reports with third-party tools using Puppet Open APIs. But this is something very advanced and we are not covering this in Puppet Fundamentals course. The Puppet documentation is available at puppet.com slash docs. We will be referring to the documentation at different times during this course. Thanks for your time. I'll see you in the next lecture.